In this video, I'm going to share a story about how one of my apps blew through 150,000 workload units, nearly 60% of our monthly budget in just three hours. And what's even crazier about this story is that the app itself was an internal tool that we were using at our company with only five users, and also that the element that was causing the problem was a single repeating group with a fixed number of 25 cells. So we're going to talk about what the problem was, how you can avoid doing this yourself, why I think Bubble should fix this problem, and also why I think they probably won't. So in order to understand this issue, we first need to understand how Bubble's real-time data fetching works. And I have a demo application here that has a list of clients. All of this is just dummy data generated from ChatGPT. But if we go into the editor here, let's take a look at what we have. So we've got this repeating group where we're searching for a list of clients. This repeating group has a fixed number of rows and we're sorting these clients by this field that I created called join date in descending order. So that the clients with the most recent join date will be at the top of this list and there will only be a maximum number of 10 clients per page. I also have a pop up here for adding new clients and a workflow set up on this button where when we fill out this form here and create a new client, a new client is added to our database. So let's go take a look at how that works. And by default, what I'm doing in this workflow is I'm just setting the join date for this new client to the current date and time. And this is just actually the address. So we'll say test address. This is what we would expect. We create a new client in our database. And this expression magically recognizes that, hey, there's this new client with a join date that is sooner than everyone else's join date on this first page. So let's pop that client in here right in position number one. Now, this is a really nice thing because we don't have to worry about fetching new data. Bubble just does some magic and we see that data refreshed right away which is really nice, but it can also cause some problems. So let's look at an example here. All right, so I've got two different browser windows open. Both are showing the same application, just different pages. And what I want you to imagine is we have user one over here who's using the app and just looking at this list of clients and user two who is using the application at the exact same time as user one is on a different page and they want to make changes to a client. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the network tab here and we're just gonna look at what happens as I make changes in this window here. So first, let's go ahead and make a change to David Jones here. And let's change his name to, I don't know, uh, David Paul. And we click on update client. There we go, and you can see in user one's window that that change gets made right away, which is again, a really nice thing, right? You see that real time update and there are many situations, especially in something like a CRM where maybe you wanna see real time status updates or whatever it is. Um, it's nice that that feature works out of the box and you can see that a get request was made right here. It fetches that newly updated client with that new name and we see that inside of the repeating group. Let's look at a different example though. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to change the name of a client who is not in this first list of results here. And let's just grab Edgar and we'll change Edgar's last name to um, Edgar Paul. And look at that. We see a different type of request being fired off in the network tab here. And if I click on this, you can see that Bubble refetches this entire list of data in this case. The response here, we get 10 different clients. In this case, we didn't update any of the clients inside of this list, so nothing is going to look different, but behind the scenes in the network tab, Bubble's actually refetching that entire list. Now, this may not seem like a big deal in this case, in this particular example, but you can imagine if you have multiple users using your app concurrently and they're looking at a repeating group and different users are doing different things where they're updating data and Bubble is refetching data on their pages behind the scenes, 
that can start to add up. And that's exactly what was happening in my case. So in my case, I had our bubble app. And again, this was just an internal tool. It was a CRM where we had five people at our company in there working during regular business hours. But the unique thing about our case is that we were integrating with this other external CRM. And for our particular use case, the challenge was that we were keeping some data in sync between these two systems. So what would happen is um, we would send files over to this external CRM and there would be people that would work on these files and we would listen to changes in this database via webhooks. So let's say that, you know, we have a client updated kind of event happening. Whenever that event would happen, we'd be listening for those changes via webhooks, right? So this external CRM would fire events back to our app. Uh, where's the text box? There it is. And we would listen for those webhooks and make changes inside of our database. And so what was happening in our case during this three hour stretch where we were consuming just a ton of workload units is we had all of our users working inside of our app. Again, this was only four or five of them, but they probably had multiple tabs open like all of us do. And then there was one user in this external CRM that was making a bunch of different updates to data on his end. And again, we're listening for those updates via webhooks. So he was making updates on his system. We were listening for those and making updates in our bubble database. And just like you saw in that last example, what was happening was our users had their application open and had a repeating group showing a list of clients because of all of the, all of the events that were happening behind the scenes and the updates we were making, their repeating groups inside of the page they were on, there were constant data refreshes happening behind the scenes. And we just burned through a ton of workload units. Just to, to demonstrate this once more, I'm gonna go to my database and I'm just gonna grab the unique ID of a random client here. And what I've done is I've set up a backend workflow that just changes the status of the client that is passed in to this backend workflow. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize this. Let's go to this page right here. And I'm going to go into Postman. I know this is going to be a little bit messy to see, but all I'm going to do is I'm going to send a request to that backend workflow and pass in that client ID. And I've got two windows open here. And what you should see is that as soon as we update this particular client, when I send this request, you can see that Bubble will refetch data in both cases. And again, in this example, you know, there's only two browsers open, but you can imagine if you have even a small number of concurrent users and regular updates happening, that this could get out of control really fast. So what do we do with this information? What does this all mean? Is this a bug that Bubble needs to urgently fix? Um, not really, it's kind of just how their system works. And like I said at the beginning of the video, most of the time this real-time data fetching is a really nice feature to have right out of the box. And despite all of the marketing talk in no code about how you can build whatever you want, the reality is that you sacrifice a lot in terms of control and flexibility when you're using these platforms. You gain a lot of other things too, for example, not having to worry about the technical challenges of setting up real-time data fetching and all of that. And these are just kind of the trade-offs that we have to consider as far as I'm concerned. But in this case, I really do hope that Bubble does fix this and gives us as developers more control over when our app refetches data. Because in my case, we were able to solve this problem by just kind of delaying when we were making updates to those client records. It wasn't ideal, but with this problem of not being able to control when your app refetches data, it's not hard to think of a few types of apps 
that really become not feasible to build on Bubble, at least not without a ton of money that you're going to be willing to burn through. Think of something like a social media app where you have users that are looking at a list of things and those lists of things are being updated regularly. So all of that data refetching happens on each of those users' browsers. That adds up really quickly. Now, do I think that Bubble is going to fix this? Um, not anytime soon, for sure. Uh, for one, when I reached out to support after I figured out what was causing this problem inside of my app, I asked if this was on their roadmap to give us more control over when our app refetches data. They said they were thinking about it, but that it's not on the immediate roadmap. And I also think it's worth acknowledging the elephant in the room here, which is that data fetching costs money. And if you fetch more data, Bubble will make more money from you fetching more data. Now, deep in my heart, I don't believe that they would avoid giving users control over data refetching in this case, or just more generally fixing things that are wrong with their platform so that they could make more money. But one of the challenges and one of the frustrations I think about dealing with um, workload unit pricing is that you often have to build things in a way to get around Bubble's limitations that end up costing more money or being more of a headache because of limitations on Bubble's end. But anyways, enough complaining. That's not the point. I hope that you found this helpful and that it gives you something to think about as you're planning all of your workflows and just building your app in general and considering workload units as you're doing it. Really quick course plug at the end here. If you are looking to expand your tool set as a developer beyond just no code, I'm working on a course that teaches you how to write code yourself so that you can kind of step outside of these systems and just have a little bit more flexibility in terms of what you're able to do. So if that sounds interesting, the link to join the waitlist for that is in the description of this video. I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.